since we're driving to our next spot, which is appropriately named the Toucan Trail, I wanted to pop in here and tell, talk to y'all about something. I know that our videos kind of get clumped up, so like the past few videos have all been from this Atlantic Forest region, and the next video might still be from this region, and I feel like I kind of need to, I don't know if the words apologize for that, but this is the only place in the world you can see this type of environment, so we don't want to just fly through it. We'll never see this again, and the birds that live here don't live anywhere else in the world. So to us, we need to explore it thoroughly, and y'all come along for the journey, so that means you're going to get three or four videos from this type of an area. It would be just like if we were in the mountain region, you're going to see a lot of mountains. So. I'm sorry if you're not the bird lovers out there and you're seeing all these birds in a few videos in a row. But I wanted to just remind you that this is a very special environment that is shrinking by the day. So we wanted to take you our time. Arrived. We are at the reception area of the Toucan Trail, and they've got a nice feeder out back. Kurt's inside talking to Marco, who I believe is the owner, and he doesn't know that I have already spotted a bird that we've never seen. He's down there. He's black and white, but he has a long tail. Don't worry, we're going to get the big cameras. Look at them getting their morning bananas. This is, the Atlantic Forest is an incredibly diverse place. And unfortunately with the thick jungles and all the things that are going on, it is so difficult to find all the different species and to really see the diversity of all the animals. So we brought you to this place, Two Canyon Trails where they have feeders and a lot of the species will show themselves throughout the day. Now, right now in the feeder, it's loaded with parakeets and palm tanagers, but there's also toucans that have been coming in, lots of different tanagers, lots of different species of birds. There's also a squirrel right here in front of us. But we're gonna enjoy this. We're gonna get some different species. We really wanna show you guys the diversity of this beautiful Atlantic forest. We've spent the morning under the feeders, having an amazing time with all the different species of birds. Uh, but we decided to take a break and go for a little walk on the trail. Now this is gonna be a little Atlantic forest trail. We're gonna cross a couple rivers. We're also told that there are potentially birds and animals on the trail that we wouldn't necessarily see in the feeder. And I'll tell you guys ahead of time that when we're in the forest, it's always harder to spot the birds than when they're feasting on bananas. But we enjoy the forest, we enjoy the nature, so we're gonna enjoy this walk.
turns out this was a nice short little trail around the lake. Tons of birds. We can hear they're hard to spot when you get into that thick forest. It makes you appreciate the feeders, doesn't it? Yeah. But look, the trail drops right by the van, and I see van in here. <sighs> All right, this is the second kind of toucans that we're getting today. And Snow just, she's like, I feel like I gotta go feed them a banana, and they are attacking her for the bananas, if you can see this right here. Absolutely amazing. Walk a little closer, hon. It landed on her hand and it's eating the banana. How precious is that? Now, we have not seen these kind of toucans anywhere in the world before, so we love toucans and we came here to see these. But how special is this, guys? Right there is where you wanna be. I'm perfectly focused on you. And the toucans are just devouring the banana. Look at this. How incredible. We are being inundated with parrots and parakeets. They have come in here and they are gorgeous if you can see them coming in. And there are some plain parakeets and there are some maroon bellied parakeets. Now the maroon belly parakeets, they're the ones that have a little bit more color to them, almost like a fish scale on their, on their belly. But they are small and gorgeous parrots, parakeets and they are really uncommon and this is the only place you will see these things look at they're landing on my head let me see if i can spin this around here so you can see but they are everywhere and they are friendly this one's probably gonna crap on me but they how cool is this guys I mean, we've been feeding them and they're just hanging out but <laughs> All right, lunch is served. We have a really nice salad. Beef, chicken, a lasagna looking dish, potatoes, rice, beans. It's gonna be yummy. Uh, there was so much stuff. There was so much food, guys, and it was really yummy. But before it finished, before we had a chance to get ice cream, the toucans showed up. So we had to run out here and two kinds of toucans showed up. Now this morning we had gotten a little glimpse of them and then they took off. So we were worried we weren't going to get them. And wow, they came uh, they came by and put on a huge show. But there was a, what was the one toucan snow? A saffron. There was a saffron toucanette that came by. And to be honest with you, they're a little bit like the emerald toucan that we've seen before. But they're just kind of like a light yellow color. But then the really gorgeous one showed up, the red-breasted toucan. Now these are rare birds. And there were several that showed up. And they come close and hoard the bananas. And if you look closely, you can see they have like a little, a long, narrow, spiky tongue <laughs> but they would devour the bananas and run off all the other birds and then all of a sudden they're gone but what a fun day playing with the parakeets the toucans all the tanagers and all the other amazing birds we met some other tourists from germany and switzerland and just had a really nice relaxing time here watching the birds uh amazing day but the journey continues and we're going to hop on the road, head down the road. We have to find a place to camp. And in this particular area, there's not a lot of spots on iOverlander. It's a little bit tricky to find a spot. So we're probably going to get out of here a little early and see if we can find a place to stay. Good morning from the interstate here in Brazil as we head north into one of the largest cities in the world, Sao Paulo. 
Uh, depending on who you ask, it's the third largest or the fourth largest. It is up there with Shanghai and Tokyo. It is bigger than Mexico City. It is huge. Now, we don't like to do big cities in the van. Quite honestly, it's just too difficult to maneuver in the traffic and finding places to park. Big cities are not the home for a camper van. But we need a fuel filter and we need to get to the Mercedes dealership in Sao Paulo. It's our only chance of finding one because it is where most of the imports come in for the country. So we are heading to the outskirts of Sao Paulo, which we still expect will be like you're in a gigantic city. We are almost to the Mercedes dealership. And even though we are just on the outskirts of this city, I gotta tell you, I'm super thankful we don't have to drive down to the middle of this thing. I told you it's one of the largest cities in the world. There are over 22 million people that live in the city, the metropolitan area of Sao Paulo. Now to put that into perspective for you, around 9 million people live in New York City, 9 million people live in London. So if you added London and New York City together, Sao Paulo is still bigger by 4 million people. That is a giant city. And we can feel the stress of the city just here on the outskirts. But so far, we've had no problems and everybody's been kind. Right. Uh, this way. This way. It's okay? He's telling us to. So, well, we are handicapped. We don't speak Portuguese. <laughs> we are handicapped because we don't speak Portuguese. <laughs> you eat pastels. Si. You like? Yes. Con chocolate or uh, pastel is uh, carne, carne or frango. Yes. <laughs> Ocasio. Yes, yes, oh, yes, pizza. Yes. Pizza, yes. Or what do they call sausage? Salami is. Ch 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 co 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 cordeo? Uh, Caldeza? Calabesa. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you eat It's like uh, black beans and. Pig, yes, yes. Like it. I love uh, Brazil has the buffets. Yes. So you can try many different foods. Oh, uh, we, uh, I have to go, go to, to work? work. Okay, okay, okay. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Hi, how are you? How are I you? come around the corner and these guys are working on the van. <laughs> Good news, bad news. Bad news. Bad news. <laughs> ah. It's totally different from. The people that we work here so it's not compatible the parts are not compatible. not even the fuel filter not even the fuel filter. Uh, i was worried about that can you order it and get it in shipped in here uh, So we weren't able to get a fuel filter and we weren't able to get a belt for the air conditioner, but we were able to get the door adjusted, which is good news. We didn't tell you guys, but we were definitely having a problem opening that from the inside. So problem solved, good news. Thank you, man. Appreciate your help, man. Awesome, yeah, nice to meet now. you. Michael Douglas, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's a celebrity. <laughs> All right, action. Oh! Look, guys, I got a new hat. There's, wait, 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 wait. There's two. There's two, of course. Two for me. No, one for me. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Michael. You, Appreciate Thank it, man. You, you take care. Everyone at the Mercedes dealership was amazing. We got a ton of support, and quite honestly, the van got a ton of attention. The mechanics were super intrigued with how different our engine looked than the ones they work on there every day. But we have left the city. Kirk got a Whopper for Burger King as close to McDonald's as you can get. We are northbound and our next big destination is an area called Parachi. It is a famous tourist area here in Brazil and we are excited to get to it. 
but we won't make it there today, it's too far. So we are headed to our campsite. And we probably have two and a half to three hours. Three hours. Quite a bit of driving. And you may hear G pretty mad about it in the back seat. So we pulled out in here and this is a gas station and this is a little restaurant and we've told you that the buffets are extremely popular here in Brazil and right here at the gas station they have a huge one huge one I want to show you and this is a list of uh, Brazilian pastries all very popular especially these things look like a teardrop they usually have chicken in them and like a queijo but typical dishes of rice and beans vegetables pork look at that big lobster with sauces all sorts of meats uh, eggplant avocado chicken fish potatoes beefs sauces so many different things if you guys see i think there's salmon over there look at that delicious food and usually at these places as i said you pay by the kilo so you get what you want you see over here they have all sorts of different kinds of cakes and desserts postres cheeses over here look they have salads those little boiled eggs quail eggs are very popular Palmito, which is hard of palm, a little juice bar. Here, oh, they even have sushi, right? And over here, still, they have a grill with all sorts of the bar foods like chicken nuggets, onion rings, fried bananas, fried yuca, chicken, sausage, steaks. I mean, you can pretty, pizzas, look at here, you can get pizzas. Pretty much anything and everything you can imagine right here when you fill up your gas <laughs> you can just pick up your food and enjoy but <laughs> we're not gonna eat all that food we're gonna head back here and have a coffee to keep us awake we have a couple hours drive less to do so we need to hop on the road okay, so I got a little coffee snow get a little latte Cheers. This place, We're, is awesome. oh, this place is crazy. We're about to get on the road. So as we've gotten north of Sao Paulo, we were mostly on the highway. Now we've kind of turned off on a secondary road, headed over towards the coast again. But as we got north, we noticed that the Atlantic forest dissipated and went away. And now we see a lot of farmland where it's been cleared for a lot of cattle and other farming. Now, one thing to note is the cattle here are a lot different than the cattle that we've been seeing in Southern Brazil. These are more of the Brahma bulls, the Brahma cows, which have the big hump, they're the white cows with the big horns. We saw them a lot when we first entered into Brazil over there. Now, Snow's daddy is a cattleman and we learned from him that these are more heat tolerant cattle. So as we move north, clearly we're getting closer to the equator in hotter climates and different cows do better up here. But we're definitely coming through more farmland and the terrain has definitely changed. We have entered a nature reserve that is mountainous and a beautiful drive. And it's called the Serra de Mar, so the mountains of the sea. Now, as we've been getting closer and closer to this reserve area, there have been tons of warning signs saying that from mile marker or kilometer marker number 78 to number 86, no long trucks, or buses, or semis are allowed. Now, we are seven meters long and the limit is 14 meters. So we are well within range and we are okay to drive on this road. But anytime you see a sign warning you about the length of your vehicle, you know you are coming up on some tight, curvy roads. We also think it's gonna be down in elevation pretty fast. And we're almost there. Additionally, on iOverlander, there is a warning about this road. 
in terms of how steep it is. There may be cars pulled over from overheating or cooling their brakes. And well, we just saw a car pulled over with its hood up. So, yeah. but they we're also, there. yeah, they also did say if you feel like your brakes are getting too hot going down, that there were pull-offs, so we yeah. can always pull off and rest them. And I have a feeling that we've been in these kind of situations <laughs> in the Andes Mountains in Peru, Ecuador, and Colombia. Times ten. <laughs> this is down fast. I don't know if that comes through on the video, but uh, this probably will be a time where we pull over and let the brakes rest a little bit up here. We'll see how long this lasts. It's the, it says from kilometer 78 to 86, so eight kilometers, that's three and a half miles or so. And this is down. is really really steep I wouldn't want to drive up and I think it would really put a strain on the engine I think trying to push the way up this we'd have to let the engine cool part of the way up we are trying to be conserve the brakes but we can hear them squeaking so I know they're heating up fortunately we're able to pump them a little bit to give them a break but still it's pretty steep guys we've taken a couple stops we're taking a conservative but this road's the real deal Breaks, but they got another rest, so that is the fourth, re third rest. We're probably three quarters of the way down, but uh, it's also going to get dark, so we got to get on down this mountain and get to our campsite. But Kurt put up with my being over protective of the brakes. <laughs> we have burned them up once. We have one time before. That was up in Peru, right? Peru. Yep. Yeah. Dropping out of Peru. Yeah, but uh. But that was the Andes. But this road is no joke. We were kind of making light of it, but it comes down fast. Two more kilometers to go. Oh. <laughs> you don't have to use the gas here. No. <laughs> Brake only. Car, you're good after the white car.
we stopped for a fifth time, which I think was a good idea. We are smoking. The brakes are smoking. Here you go, Cardi. All right, guys, despite our efforts, we are smoking the brakes. I think we are probably going to need a brake job after this. I think we burnt the brakes right there. It's only this right brake right here. All the rest of them appear to be doing okay. But we definitely have got a problem right here and we need to wait a little bit. All right guys, despite our best efforts, um, that last little piece right there, it was a long piece of S-curves. There was no place to pull off and uh, there was just no way to pump the brakes. And when you come around these S curves, the way they turn, they're just almost like they're vertical. They're almost straight down. And then you get around there and then there's another hill down. And for a little bit, we had no choice, no pull offs, but to kind of ride the brake. And uh, it was scary, to be honest with you. Uh, you don't want the brakes to let go. Um, we're pumping, we're letting them cool off. But. You know, when you look over the side of the mountain, we still have a steep tumble. So, yeah, it was just uh, really scary getting down through here. And the problem is we still have a little ways to go. So we're going to take our time. Even though we're losing some, we kind of started worrying about that in our camp campground closing. But we got to take care of business here and make sure that uh, these brakes are going to get us the rest of the way down. We made it down. It wasn't much farther on the steep part, although we're still going down, so we still need our brakes to work a little bit more. But as soon as we got past the area of limits, the past that last mile marker, immediately on both sides of the roads, brake mechanics. <laughs> there is no doubt that a lot of people lose their brakes coming down there. Kurt did a great job of resting ours when we needed them. We will need to get them looked at, make sure we didn't melt that left front one too much. We don't want to get into the rotor by going too long, which is what we did back in Peru. So that was a lesson learned. We'll try to not let that happen this time, but good job to Curdy getting us down that hill. We made it! Woohoo! <laughs> now we are about 15 minutes from our campsite, but I got to tell you, we popped out of that curvy mountain nature reserve, came down all that elevation and dumped right into the town of Ubatuba. We may be saying that wrong, but that's what we're calling it, Ubatuba. Ubatuba. And this town is so freaking cool. I have never seen a town with more bicycles in my life. And I'm even including Amsterdam in that. <laughs> well, maybe not if you know anything about yeah. Amsterdam. But there are a lot of bicycles here. They have a really nice bike lane. It is the most active town we've seen. People are out and about everywhere. Kids, families, couples riding their bikes, walking on sidewalks. Sidewalks on both sides of the street, which may not sound unusual, but it kind of is down here. It's just a fun little vibe in this town, right, Kurt? Yeah, and honestly, it's culturally seems a little bit different. So, yeah. interesting to really kind of scope the area out. Yeah. I wish we could stop and kind of maybe get dinner or something and all this activity. But the campsite is actually closing right now, but she's waiting on us. So we've got to get there. So we've got somewhere to sleep. But what a cool little town this is. places we will go now Kurt found this place online we've been whatsapping with her it's a fazienda which is a farm she knows we're coming she's told us the price so this is a campsite back in here and it looks pretty it's just we were coming through an interesting area to get here all right, we have spotted a bird we've never seen. He is bright blue with a red helmet. 
Kurt says it's a mannequin, but it's early. And as soon as we brought the big camera out, the lens fogged up. Oh, definitely no time for a tripod either. Good morning. I'm out walking G this morning. And really, it's kind of a random camp spot. And uh, it's back here in the jungle, kind of in a small town not far from the coast. And it's a little rainforest area, actually. And I think at one time it was a campground. It's or, uh, maybe like a, a nature trail or something, but I think it's kind of gone by the wayside, but we found it on the Google and were able to contact the lady. She responded and said we could stay out here. But a little mannequin popped by. And I was out walking around with Vanna this morning. Actually, we did a long forest walk. And they also have chocolate in the forest here. So that was pretty cool. It looks like maybe at one time they had a lot of plants and kind of let them go. Like a lot of things back in here. Because the trees were super tall, but they did have some big cocoa pods on them. What's so, think, Bubba? anyway, we're not going to be here long this morning, but how lucky to look out your window and see a rare, rare mannequin. Just incredible. I think Snow got pretty good video of them. Medium video. Medium video. So, anyway. Ciao, ciao. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!